I've been part of the soup kitchen since 1980 when there was a small soup kitchen at the Catholic Worker House. I would say at that time there were maybe 20, 25 people, 30 if we had an immense crowd. And it was very low key. It's grown phenomenally. We're serving 250 people now. They come from all corners of, of Urbana and Champaign. And the diversity of the people that we serve is so different because now we have many working poor. They can't afford what they used to be able to pay for. Well, see, I've been in this situation where I've been homeless. I mean, I'd have slept up on the bridges, uh, in cardboard boxes, uh, in abandoned houses, you know what I'm saying? Wherever I could sleep to stay up out of the cold. I mean, to me, it's a blessing to have a place like this to come to, you know what I'm saying? For a lot of people, it's the only source of way to eat. There's more of a need than people actually realize. I mean, it's pretty bad. I mean, times is hard out there, so, you know, this, this, this is a, it's a, it's a blessing, let me say. It's a blessing here. A lot of people are from paycheck to paycheck. They're one paycheck away from being homeless. I mean, I'm on Social Security. At any time, they can cut me off, and I'd be homeless too. The community's been very supportive of it. The people in the community, as well as the businesses and organizations here. We get food from the restaurants, food service places in town here, uh, supermarkets. The Illinois Food Bank, organizations over at the University of Illinois, to people who give stuff out of their gardens to us. There are days when we'll have to take five or six different foods or food items that came in from different places and kind of put them all together so that we end up feeding 220 or 230 people. That's the creative part of it. The versatility of the cook is challenged every day. <laughs> One of the most beautiful things is that everybody just falls to. They come and pick up where they're needed and they know just what to do. Everybody gets busy right away. It's great to watch. I sort of step back when the meal is served and I'll go up to somebody and I say, what do you think of that meal today? And the answer I typically get is, it's all right. <laughs> but, but that's okay. That's better than I'm saying. It's terrible. It's good food, of course. It's a good there's no good, I no come over here, but it's the least of food all that. We have so many people that have so many needs right in our own backyard. I feel I've had the good fortune to um, work with dedicated volunteers and do a little part in serving the ba basic needs of feeding the poor and the hungry in our own community. This is a nice place and the volunteers do a great job. See, I can see y'all, y'all can't see me. I think we could be a model. We could show people you can start a soup kitchen in a community and you can be independent. In other words, we haven't cost the city government a dime. But here we are, we're functioning, we're doing our own fundraising. We're asking people to donate so that we can afford to continue to feed the people in Champaign County. We exist solely on donations. People send us twenty-five, fifty hundred dollars a month and that's what keeps us going. We have uh, one little old lady that sends us a ten dollar check every month and I don't know that she can afford ten dollars, you know. Uh, it, it is amazing. Uh, people know there's a need and I think they respond to the fact that we don't pay anyone. We have no paid employees not one, but it still costs us a lot. We have to pay for garbage, we're paying rent, we're paying utilities, we're paying for the maintenance of all the equipment. It's amazing how much it costs. So we're spending somewhere between eleven and twelve thousand dollars a month, uh, which we get from donations. We have a good working relationship with New Covenant. And they've been very good to us, and we appreciate being there. But we want to, to have a permanent building of our own. Right now, we can only have people inside from 1030 to 1. And that's a very short period of time when it's 100 degrees out, or it's snowing and raining and freezing, all of this. Uh, for people who are homeless, that's not easy. This is our hope for the future, to have that kind of a building where it would make life uh, tenable 
for, for the people we serve. I mean, people eat seven days a week. You can't very well say, well, Monday to Friday we'll feed you, but then on Saturday and Sunday, good luck. We came up with this idea to have a van where we could do a sort of a mobile thing. So we started that up last spring, and it's been, it's grown. You know, we started off, it was very small. You know, we only had 50 or 75 people a day, and now we're serving 200 sack lunches to people, you know, mm -hmm. on Saturday and Sunday each usually. We set up shop in a parking lot and we distribute the sandwiches to whoever comes by. So we've had uh, kids, adults, families. A lot of times there are families that send one person to get lunch for everybody. And that's, what, four more people for the one person that shows up. And it's not just the sandwiches they need. There's a really big community out there that needs our help. The sack lunch is, is good, but a hot meal is better. I mean, you can do so much more with a kitchen than you can do with a, a van. Uh, and so someday we hope to have a place that we can do, do it seven days a week, and that would be great. But until then, we'll do what we can with the van. I just think it's an absolute necessity for this community to have a soup kitchen. To watch the um, guests come, uh, to see their response and very meaningful to me to see our volunteers come and grow. It's um, enriching, it's fulfilling and I feel I've become a better person. That's what I look forward to every week. <laughs> That's the most fulfilling because I find myself open to a whole new world of people that I would not have been if it weren't for the soup kitchen. You know, they, they have a hard life, but they also have uh, a lot of virtues that you wouldn't necessarily see unless you talk to them. You know, the experiences and the lessons that you learn just, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's changed me um, as a person. I have never felt better about anything I've done. Frequently, the guests who come there to eat will put their head in the kitchen and say, thanks, okay, thanks, it was a good meal. Or we'll say, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, and that's all you need. See, that's enough reinforcement for me. Uh, they, uh, they don't have to say that, but they do. So. Uh, they don't have to say anything. When they just smile and say, bye, you know that they appreciate what we do. Okay, thank you, bye. You have to day. Just to come down here and eat, it's, 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 a, it's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? And it's a blessing for these people to do what they do. They are wonderful. They're angels in disguise. You know, everybody wants a piece of the pie. There's only one. Everybody needs to eat. It's not something that you could look, that you look at the community and think, oh, it's too bad they have to have a soup kitchen. No, these people are part of the community, and what we're doing is serving them in joy. So uh, why not be part of this?